Hey Peter, uh, what's happening? Uh, I'm gonna do a little quick video here. Uh, not my style of video, and not one I usually do. I think I've only done one or two stupid videos like this. And uh, um, anyway, Bondo, bare metal, Bondo on top of a edge primer, blah blah blah, stuff like that. Let me just start by saying, uh, when Pisser did his video, I commented and uh, said that uh, at a few times on a couple of the restorations we've done at the shop, we have put etch primer down first, sanded it later, and done the uh, body filler on top of it. And I, I thought that we had checked into our etch primer and that it was safe to do that with. And then so I just was looking today. And this is the one we use. And it doesn't say either way. It says to uh, keep it off of painted surfaces. And that's pretty much all it says, is to minimize the amount you get on top of a painted surface. It doesn't say anything about putting it on top of body filler or putting body filler on top of it. So. I'll just assume and hope that the ones we've done are fine. It doesn't say, you know, one way or the other. But we're probably not going to do them that way anymore. Uh, we had talked about etching it and then putting the epoxy down and doing it on top of epoxy. And the only reason we would do something like that is because it's such a big project and a large area that it's going to be sitting open for a long time. So you're going to want to get something on top of the bare metal to protect it <clears throat> so it doesn't corrode and uh, you know otherwise we would just leave it in bare metal until it was ready to all the body work was done the filler work was done and then we'd prime it so that leads me to the other thing putting Bondo on bare metal if you put body filler on top of bare metal and then somewhere down the road, you it rusts underneath the filler, or you get back into it, repair something, you see that it's rusting, or it rusts and the filler cracks and comes off. All that means is you did something wrong. It doesn't mean that that's not how the product was supposed to be used. You did it wrong, and it's your fault. Um, I've never had that happen. We always put body filler on top of bare metal in a in the collision sense because uh and I, i'm sure most body shops do because say you're a body man you grind your dent down you, you get your stud gun out you pull the dent out you know you you metal finish it you get it ready for filler you're going to send it into the paint shop and have them put some epoxy down first and then send it back that ain't gonna happen uh you go ahead and do your body filler and anyway so i was curious about it and so Today I decided to, let's get rid of this etch primer, uh, find the tech sheets on the body fillers that I could. Now um, here's the 3M Platinum Plus, which I know a few guys like and use. And you go to the data sheet, and what it says is... Do do do... Excellent surface is adhesion to properly prepared steel, galvanized steel, aluminum, e-coat, sheet molded compound, and fiberglass reinforced polyester. Concrete and wood. Alright, it doesn't say paint, primer, clear, etch primer, nothing. <clears throat> do, do, do. And there was somewhere else in here. Directions for use. We'll go right... Oh, it's hard looking through the camera. But I'll just leave this here and read it. When repairing galvanized steel, e-coat, primed slash painted surfaces or aluminum, sand with 80 grit to remove the paint slash primer. Blow off with a clean, dry, compressed air and reclean the surface. <clears throat> so, notice it says to remove the paint and primer. Interesting. And you can go, you can find these online. You can read them. I'm not going to sit and read the whole thing. That was the 3M one. 
And let's see, we'll go to Evercoat. And this is Evercoat has a question and answer or a question and answer section about their body filler on their website. So you can go and read all these. One of the questions was can Evercoat fillers be applied over bare metal? Can they be applied over paint? If you want to go through and read this whole thing, it says our fillers are designed to work on bare, properly prepared, get that properly prepared, surfaces such as steel, aluminum, galvanized, stainless steel, fiberglass, and SMC. Some people prefer applying an epoxy primer over the bare substrates to enhance corrosion protection. Our products don't need to be applied over an epoxy as long as the bare surface area is clean and no surface rust or contamination is present. And it says some auto manufacturers um, require you to coat the bare metal surface with epoxy before applying filler and if you're doing warranty work you should consult the manufacturer for the recommended procedure for their warranty. It says fillers and putties will normally work okay. They will normally work okay over properly sanded cured OEM paint. However, with so many different types of aftermarket paint available, we recommend that all paint be removed where filler is to be applied. So there you go. That's Evercoat. And I, I checked and I looked at the, the technical data sheets on the Rage, the Rage Gold, the Rage Extreme, and the Quantum. And they all said the same thing. They're meant to be applied over steel you know bare clean so if you're having a problem with it uh, it's because you're doing it wrong personally in my opinion this is in fact like you know these technical data sheets this is you know the manufacturers of the products that make them this is their how they're telling you the best way to do it is uh, I tried finding the, a data sheet for the Matrix Bondo online. It's, there's not one in the book, and there's not one on their website. But even it says... I mean, they have a little thing about their body fillers right here. And, uh, you know, excellent adhesion to steel, galvanized steel, uh, metal, and aluminum. The only one that says it can be put on top of paint is the... Uh, BP-16 body prep polyester finishing putty and both of the the lightweight grip body filler and the premium gold filler say you know bare steel uh, I've put you know bond bondo over paint plenty of times I've never had a problem I'm just saying this is this is how they tell you to do it um, so anyway that's that uh, as far as the uh, better over primer, personally I think that's something the paint company started to sell you more primer. Um, that might not be true, but it sure makes sense to me. You don't see Evercoat saying you need to do that because they're not pushing, you know, primer and epoxy primer and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, the paint companies will tell you that because they're going to sell you the primer that you can use. Stuff like that. So that's all I got to say. You know, uh, I don't really generally like to get into a lot of this kind of stuff because that's not why I am on here. And uh, well, at least that's I try not to. <laughs> Obviously, I am getting involved in it because I'm making this stupid video. But uh, no, I just want to have fun, make videos, and be a dumbass. But. Sometimes when I hear a lot of this other information around, you know, it gets me thinking and then I want to check into it more and see if what I feel is right or not. And sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But that's what I found this time. So that's all I got. Uh, I did get a couple stickers. So I'll show those real quick. Mm -hmm. It's really dark in here. And that light didn't do anything, but I got a Ziggy sticker, and that one's pretty sweet. So I'll get that one up. And I've had this one for a week or so. WTBM123. 
and I haven't put that one up yet either. And see, I still have Jim's sticker too, which, you know, this is his. I just haven't given it to him and stuff like that. And just so you know, when I bought my Nova, it had that license plate on it. And I guess the guy that owned it must have not been able to remember what kind of car it was when people asked him. So, yeah, that's what he had to do.